Welcome. Thank you for your attention today. The objective of this induction is to prepare you for your work at Fakatane Mill. A safe and secure workplace is important to you and to everyone associated with Fakatane Mill. To help us achieve that, we need you to understand some rules around personal safety and understand and follow our emergency procedures, incident reporting and hazard management processes. You're about to see a presentation which will give you the essential information you need to contribute to a workplace that's always safe for you and for your workmates. At the end of this induction session, you must complete a questionnaire which proves you understand the most important information inside this presentation. Your induction booklet is your passport to the site, so keep it with you at all times. Write your name, date and the name of your Whakatane Mill supervisor in your booklet. Contractors and visitors must sign in and sign out each day. There are four places where you can do this. At the mechanical workshop, in the foyer of the main office building, in the foyer of the technical block, upstairs in the powerhouse. Note that no children under the age of 15 are allowed on site. It's compulsory for employees, visitors and contractors to wear personal protective equipment which meets our minimum site standards. For contractors, it's your company's responsibility to supply personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment and personal protective clothing must be maintained in good condition. There are four items that are the minimum personal protective equipment for this site. These are safety boots, high-vis jackets or overalls, safety glasses, Hearing protection and hard hats are also required in designated areas, along with other specific personal protective equipment. All persons must carry appropriate eye protection at all times whilst on the Whakatane mill site. All visitors and contractors must wear high-vis jackets or overalls which meet the night-day transport standard at all times. All employees must wear high-vis clothing in designated high-risk areas, those areas where vehicles are present. Hearing protection must be worn in noisy areas, as indicated by signs at building entrances, or where a task analysis has identified the need for hearing protection. Noisy areas include PM3, the boiler house, the log yard, and the groundwood mill. Hard hats are compulsory in the log yard. Hard hats have an expiry date of three years from the date of manufacture, or two years from date of issue. Random audits are conducted during maintenance shuts, and these include checking of personal protective equipment to make sure its condition is up to standard and that it hasn't passed its use-by or expiry date. The use, sale, transfer or possession of drugs or controlled substances on site is forbidden. Employees, contractors or visitors on site while under the influence of drugs, alcohol or controlled substances is forbidden. Any person found to be in breach of this policy may face disciplinary action, which could result in the termination of employment. Smoking is only allowed in designated smoking areas. Employees found smoking outside a designated smoking area will be subject to disciplinary action, and contractors may be excluded from sight. There is one number you must remember on this site, 7777. This is the site emergency number. You can use any landline on this site to dial 7777. This will connect you immediately to the mill radio system. Once you're connected to the mill radio system, an emergency response team person will answer. Tell them what the emergency is. For example, your mate just had a heart attack. Once the emergency response team person has all the details they need from you, do not hang up the phone. You must push the hash button, then hang up the phone. This is very important, and you'll see more about this in the evacuation procedure. In an emergency, call 7777. This connects to Mill Radio System. Ask for emergency response team. Everybody with a Mill Radio can hear the conversation. Provide all the relevant information. Once the call's completed, please press the hash key. Hang up then in order to release the radio system. Report all injuries to your Whakatane Mill Supervisor so correct treatment can be sought, information can be captured in Risk Manager, and corrective actions can be implemented. Contractors, 
report the incident to your Fakatane Mill supervisor and your employer. We are now going to show you the Fakatane Mill evacuation procedure. The Fakatane Mill has a responsibility to ensure everyone's safety on this site. Whether it's your safety while on the site or your safe evacuation from it, if an emergency arises, our policy is safety first. Remember, it's in the first three minutes of a fire that you have the best chance of putting it out or escaping from a building. So that we know that you are safe, if there's an incident on site, we insist on your signing in each time you come here and signing out when you leave. This signing in means that in an emergency, our wardens can account for you in any evacuation that might be necessary. Mill employees and permanent contractors do not need to sign in as their names are kept on permanent record at the evacuation point. However, everyone who comes onto this site, employee, contractor or visitor, must know what to do and if emergency alarm is sounded. Evacuations fall into two broad categories. One is a full site alarm and the other is for a local emergency which could be in any one of the four designated evacuation zones. Splitting the plant into four zones means any one of them can be evacuated while the rest of the mill keeps running. The most likely reason for a local evacuation would be a fire, but in any emergency an alarm will be sounded. In the administration and maintenance buildings the alarm will be the continuous ringing of bells. In production areas, it will be the continuous rise and fall of a siren accompanied by flashing red lights. When an alarm is activated, all sirens or bells in that particular evacuation area will be sounded. When these go off, you must exit the building you are in by the safest route and report to the evacuation assembly area. This is north of the log yard, by the mill road perimeter fence. If the emergency is an earthquake, you should avoid routes where overhead structures could collapse. Notices advising you where to go are posted at the exits to all buildings and you should get to know these details as a matter of course. Warn others to evacuate in case they are unaware of the situation. Close all doors on leaving your office or building as this could prevent fire spreading. No one is to enter or go back into a building in which an alarm has been sounded until the alarm has been reset and the all clear given by your area warden. Wardens in turn will be advised by either the senior fire officer attending the call or the shift engineer in case of a false alarm. If you're the first to notice a fire or emergency, you should take the following action. Set off the nearest alarm by breaking the glass and activating the button. Or phone 7777 and ask for help. If you're in no personal danger, attack the fire with a portable extinguisher, but make sure you have an escape route. If you can't help, warn others and evacuate immediately. The designated warden will check that all personnel are clear and accounted for at the assembly area by carrying out a roll call. In all circumstances, you must follow your area warden's instructions. These could be instructions to vacate buildings, locate and go to the assembly area, stay at the assembly area, leave the mill site, or re-enter a working area. In an emergency of any kind, your warden's word is to be followed without question. All alarms will be sounded in case of a full site emergency. 
This includes the two-tone sight alarm. The sight alarm is only likely to be sounded in the case of a major earthquake, explosion, fire, storm or tidal wave. When it's sounded, a skeleton staff has instructions to shut down all plant and machinery, leave it in a safe condition and evacuate immediately to the assembly area, if it's safe to go there. So, recapping briefly. If you're first to be aware of an emergency, sound the fire alarm. If it's a fire which can be brought under control with a fire extinguisher, do that. If not, phone 7777 and ask for help. Warn others, evacuate the building and go to the evacuation assembly area. Obey the instructions of your area warden at all times. Under no circumstances return to the work area you were in until the all clear is given and the area warden says you can return. Remember, this evacuation system is designed to save lives, yours in particular. Do not ignore these warning procedure instructions. So to recap, if you hear an evacuation alarm, you must exit the building and proceed to the evacuation assembly area along the fence line north of the log yard. If the emergency is an earthquake, watch out for falling objects. You must follow all instructions given by your warden. The site-wide alarm will be sounded when there's a site-wide evacuation. In addition, if the emergency is a tsunami, the site-wide alarm will sound continuously and won't rise and fall. When you hear the continuous siren, you must evacuate to the first floor of the PM1 building. This area is also set up as an evacuation assembly area. The alarm is tested between 8.45 and 9am on the last Wednesday of each month. If the alarm continues to sound after 15 seconds, it's a real evacuation and not a test. A near miss is something that did not result in an accident, but under different circumstances it could have resulted in injury or harm to personnel or plant. You must report any near misses to your Whakatane Mill supervisor or the health and safety manager. A hazard is anything or any situation that could cause harm. It might be an uncovered drain, dust or even noise. We have an online hazard register in Risk Manager. Hard copies are available on notice boards. The person supervising work must ensure that everyone's briefed on the hazards before they commence work. You must attend toolbox meetings prior to any shut work on this site so that potential hazards can be discussed. If you see something that could cause harm, you have a responsibility under the Health and Safety Act to take immediate action. There are three steps you must take. First, if you can, remove the hazard or isolate it so that no one gets hurt. Then you must let people know who might be affected by it. Finally, you must report it to your Whakatane Mill Supervisor or the Health and Safety Manager. No private vehicle is allowed on site unless it's used as a tool of the trade. If your vehicle's just a people mover or you're dropping off tools, then your vehicle must be removed to the main car park. If you need to work from your vehicle on a regular basis, you must obtain permission from your Whakatane Mill Supervisor who will issue you with a vehicle permit which must be displayed on your dashboard at all times. Your vehicle must be parked out of any main thoroughfares. You may use Whakatane Mill vehicles provided you have the appropriate license, written permission from your Whakatane Mill supervisor and have read and signed the Whakatane Mill motor vehicle policy. The speed limit for this site is 20 km per hour. Within the buildings the speed limit is walking pace when driving, keep to the designated roads. You must not use a mobile phone whilst driving on site. Bicycles may only be used for travel to and from home. Bicycles cannot be used during work. All electrical hand tools and extension leads must be used with a transformer or a residual current device. Contractors should provide their own electrical equipment, but in some circumstances may borrow equipment from our number two store. 
Test tags must be on all electrical extension leads and power tools. Test tags must be current. If they're not current, leave them in your vehicle and borrow one from number two store. Industrial standard type plugs are used on the site and domestic type plugs are used in offices and other selected areas. Material safety data sheets are available at all chemical storage tanks. They are there for your use. All signage and information must be followed. Contractors cannot bring chemicals onto the Fakatane mill site until they get approval from the technical department or the environmental manager. Contractors must supply material safety data sheets along with other relevant information. Chemical spills must be dealt with immediately. If you see a spill or have a spill, you're expected to block the drain as quickly as possible. Spill kits are available and clearly labelled on walls around the site. If you can't manage the spill yourself, report it to your Fakatane Mill supervisor. If you require emergency assistance, phone 7777 and request the emergency response team to support you. You must report spills to your supervisor, shift engineer or environmental manager as soon as possible. Plant Isolation Hold Cards When people need to interact directly with a machine and there's a risk it'll start or move, an isolation may be required. Trained staff will identify where isolations need to be applied. Isolate the equipment, electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, steam. Complete a hold card and reconnection order. Apply the hold card to the isolation and hold the reconnection order. Check all isolated equipment before starting work. Plant isolation group. Often there are many points of isolation and for these an isolation listing is produced. Hold cards are placed on all isolations listed by the isolation supervisor. Those applying the isolations sign the isolation listing. Additional people needing to work on the machine sign onto a group isolation card. When the work is completed, all people are to sign off the group isolation card. Isolation supervisor and individuals match the reconnection order to the hold card, remove the isolation and test the operation. And no one can remove your hold card except you. All breaches of our isolation policy will be treated very seriously. Permit to work. When any work is undertaken on site, there are associated hazards. To control these hazards, for routine work, we'll have written SOPs, work instructions. For non-routine work, a task-based risk assessment must be done. If the risk score is greater than 10, or any of the following permits are required, then a permit to work must be initiated. Working at heights. Confined spaces. 33 kilovolt compound access, excavation, gas, hot work, electrical work, plant isolations. Permits can only be issued by trained permit issuers and include details from task-based risk assessment, list of other permits required, controls to be employed, a list of people authorized to work under the permit, sign on and off, all people working in the area must sign on to the permit before work commences. All those working under the permit must sign off when their work is completed. The permit is a 24-hour document. All plant and machinery must be handed back in a safe and tidy state. The Fakatane mill makes coated paperboard as a key component of food packages and therefore must conform to regulations imposed by different national and international laws or commitments. Fakatane mill board must be clean from foreign material due to physical, chemical or biological contamination for both food grade and aseptic board. Fakatane Mill Limited requires everyone to adhere to hygiene practices. Keep work areas, plant and equipment clean. Work must not contaminate the process. Dispose of any object that could find its way into the product. Use the containers provided for the disposal of Stanley knife blades. 
Glass breakage must be reported and cleaned up immediately. Do not carry loose objects in pockets, pens, pencils, etc. All food brought into the mill must be kept in the lunchroom or lockers. You must wash your hands after eating, drinking and using the toilet. All cuts and grazes on exposed skin must be covered with a blue plaster. That brings us to the end of this induction and you'll be given a questionnaire to complete. Please write your details in full without abbreviations. For example, write John Smith, not J. Smith, and include your email address. Answer every question. This induction covers you for 24 months from this date. You'll be notified by email when you're due for your next induction. Thank you for your attention today.